thing. Insert a coin. No, I can't do it. That sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Let that be the, let that be the intro. <laughs> All right, so this week in video game news, because there's always video game oh, news, uh, one big thing, well, it's not a big thing, but Microsoft launched the Xbox in Japan three weeks ago, two weeks ago, sometime like we that. We covered it earlier. We covered it. It has been doing steadily worse and worse. So, I'm sorry, I just got to read off these numbers. That, I mean, they, they know it'll do poorly. Right. So, in the first four days, they sold 25,674 Xbox One units. 25,000. In the second week, they sold 3,015 units. 3,015. It was outsold by the PlayStation 3, 2 to 1. The PlayStation 3, 2 to 1. And the PS4, 8 to 1. And then this past week, they sold 1,314 Xbox Ones. As well as 103 Xbox 360s, which I don't know how they did that. <laughs> but uh, that is 1,000. 1,000 is... Unheard of. Anything. It's unheard of. I think the Wii U probably I'm, outsold it last week. I mean, I'm not surprised. Xbox has never done well in Japan. No, that's it's fair. it's a known thing. One of the things that w- they were taking away from this though was that at the Microsoft like launch event, mm-hmm. they had some games that were more specifically aimed at you know the Japanese audience, and there seemed to be some interest. This wasn't sorry, not only at the launch event but at uh, Tokyo Game Show, which was last week. Okay. Um, but because those games don't have release dates yet and they're not out yet, oh. there's no interest in buying the console now when they don't even really know what it is because it hasn't been right. advertised well in their country. So, I mean, and the PlayStation 4 actually isn't selling as well in Japan as it is there in the rest of the world. Because Japan's kind of moving more towards mobile gaming and handhelds and stuff. Hmm. Just kind of a thing. So, still, Microsoft, really. I mean, don't, don't take this as a bad... Like, don't take this personally... Because you knew this. This is probably like the it's best a fight they knew bet. they would lose. Yeah, you, but they had to try anyway. Right. China is your next best bet, and they delayed that launch uh, by a couple of months or something. Yeah. So we'll see when that happens. Uh, another thing that happened this week was Blizzard canceled yes. Titan, their next MMO, which is sad. So for those who don't know, Blizzard is the company that made the massive multiplayer online game World of Warcraft and Diablo. And vacuumed up all that money mm-hmm. all that money from all those millions of people so i think, it, I think yeah. at its peak it was like 12 million people were subscribing to uh i, World of I Warcraft. heard similar numbers yeah. to that so that's pretty impressive it's down to about six million now which is it's still a ton it's, it's still, still a lot of people so much more than any other mmo yeah but to see the trend is not great to money maker right. and people so it's very sad that they canceled titan after it was apparently in development for four years, but I guess the project started seven years ago. So it's going to be their sort of sequel, not sequel, but I guess follow-up to right. World of Warcraft, their next MMO. The comp- they started making the game, I mean, four years in development, you're going to have a lot of assets. And apparently, it just wasn't fun. And they figured that instead of hurting players, they just would scrap it. It's one of those better to lose a little, you know, quote, little amount of money compared to a lot that a full game launch would have entailed. We're looking at you, Duke Nukem. About $50 million worth of investment was cancelled through cancelling this project, but that's a small amount of money compared to the hundreds that would have been spent through the final phases of, you know, actually publishing it. That's a sad day for Blizzard, but, I mean, they're a a smart company. They're going to bounce back. They're always going to have something that people want to buy. And then the last, the last bit of video game news... And utterly confusing news. Utterly confusing news is that this week, um, Ubisoft, 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 whatever you pronounce it, uh, they announced that in the season pass for Assassin's Creed Unity, you would get access to a another Assassin's Creed game. It was a side-scroller kind of 2.5D game that is called Assassin's Creed Chronicles colon China. And the main protagonist, which I should have written her name down, that's right, her name, because it's a woman, is a woman in China. Yeah. And this is after the yeah. huge debacle at E3 yeah. this year. Now, people have been clamoring for either a China or Japanese-based Assassin's Creed game for a while. Yeah. So I kind of see them 
publishing this as almost like fan service of, okay, here's something close to what you want. Yeah. And then the female protagonist is... Uh, we There's an earlier episode, I'm sure we can link link to our earlier discussion on Ubisoft's... Click here. Bad decision-making in how they should speak. Yes. Uh, because they've previously mentioned how having female characters is hard. Even though they've already had at least one game with a female protagonist as their main character before, they just apparently don't remember even producing it. Assassin's Creed Liberation. And so, Assassin's Creed Chronicles China is basically another one on, you know, the diversity list of Ubisoft saying that they can do better. Right. And I was reading somewhere, I think, on Polygon, where they were talking about how this might be... They might have made this game... This game was clearly in development before E3, right? Oh, yeah. They didn't just make this in the last four months. Right. So the fact that that the guy said that at E3 was kind of... Even worse. Even worse. If you know that you have a game that has a female protagonist, and then you go out and say, oh, well, we don't really do that because it's hard. Yeah. It's kind of dumb, right? So... Some people are looking at this as might be a response to that, but game development doesn't work that way. This game was clearly in development long before then, so it just kind of looks worse for them. But, putting all that aside, I have not played an Assassin's Creed game since Assassin's Creed 1, and I only played it for a little bit. I actually want to play this this side-scrolling one because it looks really fun. It's going to be vastly different from any other game. Yeah, but I, Instead I of 3D exploration, it's 2D. Yeah. I told I, if I can buy it outside of the DLC, then I will totally do it. So that's your bit of gaming news. You can unplug and go play some Destiny. Uh, thanks for watching and subscribing and doing all, all that, that stuff downstairs. Stuff. Downstairs, yeah, right down there. Uh, next up will be our little bit of television news. More entertainment coming your way in your brain tank. So here is the deal. This week is one of the major weeks that kicked off of the fall television se- season. I mean, technically last week new episodes started for many TV shows, but this week, specifically on Monday, Gotham launched, which was pretty big. PlayStation and Xbox today on Let's Talk About. This is You're on Out of Space TV. Whatever. Our names will be at the bottom. Yeah. So, whatever. Um, so, this past year, 2013, was th- last year's 2013, yes. right? Yes. Both Sony and Microsoft released Xbox, they released PlayStation 4.